like two sumo wrestlers today. Hogan's in the corner, and he steps on the baseline out of bounds. Of course, you're looking for Reggie Evans, but the defense, watch Parker step to him. When Parker steps to him, that creates the opening for Evans, and he's capable of hitting that little jump shot. But that battle inside, Parker's 6'8", 255, Evans 6'8", 245. They're going to go at it all night long. But this young man is the key, Dean Oliver. They're going to have to provide some outside shooting for this Iowa team. Evans can't handle the low bounce pass by Glenn Worley. Now Tayshawn Prince, who had 27 points, Against only cross all Smith from 20. Loose ball, Evans with a strong rebound. <laughs> Once he gets it, Gus, I don't think you're going to take it away from him. Reggie Evans leads the nation in rebounding. Boy, from up top. Count it. Brody Boyd, a freshman from Duggar, Indiana. At 22 points in the Big Ten Championship game, including four of eight from three-point range. Now Parker on the power with a great jump hook. And Parker's offensive game has really come along as the season has progressed for Kentucky. He's going to be a handful for Evans down on the inside. But Saul Smith doing a great job keeping the ball away from Dean Oliver. Worley spins, leans, draws the foul. The Iowa Hawkeyes out of the Big Ten Conference, located in Iowa City. And they won the Big Ten Tournament. And that was a huge win for Steve Alford and the entire program as they just ran right through the tournament four games in four days. And they went into that tournament desperately needing at least a couple of wins, but they took all the guesswork out of it for the NCAA Tournament Committee by winning the whole thing. Beat Indiana in the final. Glenn Worley, a freshman from Iowa City. Gets the second to go. Iowa off to a good start. 7-2, two, two minutes into the first half of play. And here's Iowa, a little three-quarter court pressure. In the corner, Bogan squares up. Count it. And one of the problems when you try to put some pressure on, if the team passes over the pressure, they're going to get some open jump shots. And in guys like Bogans and Prince, Kentucky has people who can make those jump shots. Keith Bogan, 17 points on 7 of 15 shooting in 31 minutes against Holy Cross. Now Evans draws the double team. Oliver behind the back to kick. Juez Henderson off the dribble. Spins out Worley. Nice two-hand rebound and gets the bounce. Iowa strength is their inside play and Worley's going to have to be active. Now Fitch down the lane. Short. Juez Henderson with the rebound. Iowa with numbers. Henderson bobbles it. The kick. Oliver can't get it to fall. That's a great pass by Oliver. Henderson, I think, was trying to shoot it before he caught it. Now Bogan. On the hop inside. Keith Bogan. He does that as well as anybody in the country. You get by your guy out on the perimeter, the jump stop, and just rise up and shoot it anywhere from 15 feet and in. Keith Bogan's averaging 17 points per game for this Kentucky squad. He's a sophomore. On the low post, it's Evans, and he's fouled. Why does Evans draw so many fouls? Why does he go to the line so much? Because they know he's the inside threat, and here they're trying to get an inside threat for Evans on the fast break, or for Henderson on the fast break. He just can't catch it. That's a nice pass by Oliver. But Evans does such a great job catching the ball down inside. He's so wide, the defender simply can't get around it. Second foul called on Parker. He checks out of the game. Here's Boyd in the corner. Henderson sets his feet. High bounce. Evans with the putback. Reggie Evans gives Iowa an 11-7 lead. Now Bogans from downtown. Henderson picks it up. Boyd driving baseline. Shuffles it off. Worley drops. It's blocked to Evans. To the basket, high and in. Reggie Evans. The young fellas come to play today. 13-7, Iowa. Showing us the whole package. The short jump shot, the offensive rebound, another drive to the basket. Deshaun Prince, dangerous with the ball on the perimeter. Now Bogans crosses over twice. 
tries to wrap it around and turns it over. Oliver with Boyd. Oliver straight to the basket and one. And the Iowa Hawkeyes are energized. One of the keys to Oliver's success is his aggressiveness. He just explodes and dares Fitz to block the shot. Hard to the basket. Boyd does a nice job running the lane on the other side, providing a distraction. And this young man is nothing short of amazing, folks. His father served two years in prison for drug trafficking. He raised his younger brother by himself on the campus at Iowa. Coming out of high school, a 4.0 student and a terrific basketball player. But right now, Oliver and Evans taking care of their business. 16-7 Iowa. Everybody knows where Steve Alford is from, so when it comes to playing Kentucky, there's no love lost. Well, I'm a Hoosier. I was born and raised in Indiana, and you know that... Uh, when you cross the river, you're, it, it's different, uh, and that uh, uh, there's no love lost between Indiana and Kentucky. So uh, Tubby and I probably haven't sensed that because we've never played against each other or coached against each other. 16-7, Iowa, 15-32 to go. Got some games, NCAA tournament games are big, but some games are extra special for different reasons, and that's certainly a good one to get your team fired up, but that'll quench the fire right there for Iowa. Deshaun Prince with his first basket, a three-pointer. He was definitely the difference in their win over Holy Cross. Came off the bench and hit back-to-back -back threes that really propelled the Kentucky Wildcats to victory. Inside, Worley shuffles his feet. No basket, traveling violation. And Steve Alford, there's been a lot of speculation about Steve taking over at Indiana. Mike Davis is the interim coach, and the Hoosiers losing their first round game. And they have not made a decision on whether or not they will bring Mike Davis back. As J.P. Blevins travels, Alford says that uh, he has not paid any attention to Indiana whatsoever. He has not commented on whether or not he's interested because the job is currently taken by Mike Davis. Yes, and I think you have to take Steve Alford at his word. Uh, it's one of those things where he is obviously an ex-Mr. Basketball in Indiana, an icon of Indiana basketball, a successful coach. So if there's going to be an opening in Indiana, certainly his name is going to be mentioned, but he keeps telling people he's already got a job. Boyd looks inside, but he just called himself a Hoosier. Well, of course he's a Hoosier. Sixteen ten, Iowa leads Kentucky. 14-19 to play in the first half. They shot Prince from downtown. Loose ball rebounded by Daniels and the freshman from Cincinnati puts it home. Iowa's a team that gets offensive rebounds because of their great strength on the inside. Kentucky can do it because they're quick and they're hard to find those guys and block them out. Daniels, very effective inside player. And Jason Parker, the freshman center, from Charlotte is on the bench for Kentucky with two fouls. The bracket here in the East USC with a sterling performance this evening against Boston College. They beat the Eagles and advance to the Sweet 16. They'll take on the winner of this one. There's Jason. But of course, with Stone and Estel, in addition to Parker, Tubby Smith's got a couple of big guys, three, who can get in there and have 15 fouls to use against Evans. Certainly can. Now Evans squared up, leans in, bad shot, oh! but gets it to fall. Well, he was looking for the foul right there. How did he force that one in the basket? He's four for four from the field. And Iowa takes an 18-12 lead. Daniels, the left-hander, and a rebound to Thompson. Rod Thompson, a junior from Galesburg, Illinois. Stop and start, Oliver. See, Oliver's got to be able when he penetrates inside and draws the defense to find a guy like Boyd on the outside who can shoot that perimeter shot. Boy, that's good defense by Kentucky. They're really forcing the ball way out. Oliver, turkey turkey, the step back short. What a great rebound by Prince. He was had one arm. Thompson had him by one arm, his right arm, and he grabbed the ball with his left hand. So Rod Thompson called for his first foul. 
First team foul against the Hawkeyes with 13 minutes to go in the first half of play. Now Saul Smith, Tubby Smith's son. His other son, Gigi Smith, who played at Georgia, is on the bench. He's an athletic trainer. Inside, they kick it back to Smith. Gosh, you have to say early that this is a very half-court tempo kind of game, and that works in the favor of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Now Prince, double team. Smith from 20. Down. I'll tell you what, Smith is a guy who's capable of hurting you from out there, but if you're going to make a choice, do you want Prince to shoot that or Smith? And I think you'd choose Smith, and that's what Iowa did by double-teaming Prince, forcing him to give up the ball. Paul Smith on the season, a 32% three-point shooter. 41 threes on the year. Now Brody Boyd. Evans calling for it inside. Notice how Prince is laying off Thompson, though, helping out on the inside. Henderson finds him. Evans to the basket, gets his own rebound. Strip going up, and the foul. I'll tell you what, Dan. Reggie Evans looks like a young Moses Malone. Remember, Moses used to just throw that thing at the basket and go get it. And watch Evans here. He comes into the lane, shoots the ball, and you're right, guys. That's what he does. He throws it up and goes, goes and gets it. And right now, he is the best guy in college basketball at getting his own miss. He's a guy that if he's got the ball and he shoots it inside, don't go try to block his shot. Just concentrate on turning around and block him, blocking him out. Second team all Big Ten. He ended the season leading the nation with 323 free throw attempts. Subs coming in, Jason Smith, number 43. And Evans got off to a very, very slow start in the Thursday night games. In fact, he sat on the bench for long periods of time because Steve Alford said he was nervous, but the last 10 minutes, he was big time. Strokes the free throw there. 11 53 to go, first half, Iowa by five. Coliseum Dwayne Ballin here, Iowa leads Kentucky 2015. Iowa's Reggie Evans is something of a surprise to everyone in the country this year. Here's how he came to Iowa. Chief assistant Rich Walker to Steve Alford was at a jamboree for junior college teams, and he was there to watch one player and another player he could not take his eyes off of. That guy was Reggie Evans. He said he's only made one call before the pass to Steve Alford. He told him, you have to come see this guy play, and here he is now on the national stage, guys. All right, Dwayne, they compared him during that jamboree to Buck Williams because of his rebounding ability, the former Maryland star. And Reggie almost went to Maryland. Here's Bogans down the lane, the kick, Blevins. Loose ball, tapped around, and it's with and the rebound. That is a Buck Williams-like rebound right there. You tap it till you tap it till you can get it, and then you secure it. Anderson foul going to the basket. Five rebounds for Evans. Anderson will shoot two. And Daniels it, called for his first. And if anybody thought that Iowa was simply going to hold on to the ball and walk it up the court, the Hawkeyes have certainly disabused them of that notion early in the game. They're running up trying to get the opportunity baskets before Kentucky can set its defense. Steve Alford. Tremendous job at Iowa in his two years. Duez Henderson, a junior from McKenzie High School in Detroit. Can't get the second to go. Daniels with the rebound. Cliff Hawkins into the game. Freshman from Dumfries, Virginia, wears number one. He's asthmatic, so he'll play short bursts. Now Daniels in the pivot. Iowa in the man-to-man. -man. Bogut's hard jab step, steps back. The three is pure. Gus, there's no way to guard that. Duess Henderson has to respect that jab step because Bogans can go hard to the basket. Eight points for Keith Bogans. Two threes. 21-18. Now Oliver into the front court. Thompson fires it up. And gets the bounce. Gus, I do not know that that's what Steve Alford wants in that situation. The ball went in the basket, but Thompson comes into this game as a 17% three-point shooter. Now Bogans again. Hawkins, quick turn on the baseline. Esco with the great catch and the finish. He did a great job looking that ball in like a shortstop and holding it up high and putting it in the basket.
This is a great job of penetration in here. The spin by Hawkins draws the defense, and now Thompson turns around and just touches Estel in the chest right there. That is not a very smart play by Thompson, and Steve Alford very upset. Marquis Estel, a sophomore from Richmond, Kentucky. Shot 63% from the field in the SEC, 81% from the line. Gus, you're not going to make great plays every time because that was a great offensive play, but you sure don't want to foul that guy as he's making the basket. Al Smith around the corner, drags his pivot foot and travels. And the Iowa Hawkeyes are without arguably their best player. I don't think there's any argument about it. 18.1 points per game and great success with Wrecker early in the regular season and then once he went out, some struggles, but they've sure put it together in the postseason. Four wins in the Big Ten tournament and their win the other night. Injured his knee against Missouri, blew the knee out against Indiana. As they say that that knee will heal completely and he'll be back for next year. Marquis Estel across the lane, beautiful jump hook. And one of the ways that you keep a guy like Evans in check is to occupy him on defense, make him guard somebody. Good move going inside to Esther. 24-22. Thompson again for three and hits! Gus, I'm telling you, he's got two threes in this game. He only had three all season before those two shots. Hawkins almost stripped. Now Prince on the baseline. Esther with the rebound. Foul going up. Get an interactive tournament experience with fan polls, in-game features, audio clips, and video highlights. It's all at the Internet's home for college basketball. CBS.sportsline.com or AOL keyword CBS Sportsline Basketball. Marquis Estel, who missed last year as a partial qualifier, but he can get an additional year if he graduates in four. That's right, and he may be one of those guys that you know, big guy developing, it might actually favor both he and Kentucky. And I think that's a great rule. Oh, I think it's a great rule as well. If the guys prove that they can do it, then give them a chance. Reggie Evans takes the seat. Eskel sinks the second free throw. Young man lost 50 pounds between high school and his freshman year at Kentucky, 27-23 Iowa. Kentucky back into a zone. Vince chasing. Well, not a lot of outside shooting power in the game right at the moment. Worley, 13 to shoot, knocked out of bounds, and will head the other way. Essel going down hard in the paint. Trying to draw the charge right here. Worley forcing his way in, and Essel going down hard, but I think you got to hit a guy that big a little harder to knock him down. <laughs> In soccer, I think he got the yellow card for a flop. Now Bogans, foul inside against Rod Thompson. And this is why Estel is in the game. He's a on the bench, picking up two quick fouls. Parker got in some foul trouble in the game against Holy Cross. Only played 18 minutes, but in those 18 minutes had 10 points, so Parker can be effective on the inside. And Thompson picks up his third foul. He takes a seat. Iowa in the 2-3. This is a defense where you cannot just throw the ball around the perimeter. You've got to get it inside, either on the dribble or on the pass. In the corner, Fitch. Prince the top round, and Esther misses the one-hand jam. Now Prince on the hop, loses it. Into the hands of Fitch, he's fouled. Tonight on CBS, the sting operation exposes police corruption. Now the toughest fight against crime is between the cops themselves. Don't miss Greg G. Nelson in the district tonight on CBS. Gerald Fitch, a freshman out of Macon, Georgia. And since he's been, been in the starting lineup, Dan, Kentucky has really reversed its uh, fortune. Gus, they're 20 and 4 with him in the starting lineup, 3 and 5 in their first eight games when he didn't start. And then Stone comes back in. 
Gus, one of the interesting things in this game is what kind of play the teams are going to get from their benches. They rely on guys to come in off the bench. Not very many points from the bench for either one of these teams in Thursday's game. Fitch gets the second. 27-25, here's the press. Oliver bringing it up all by himself. All by himself, and there's Fitch on him and all over him, and that kind of energy is what Fitch gives this team. Rody Boyd can't get it. Rebound inside Zondeliner, and he's fouled. Fitch is a guy that just has so much energy for Kentucky. He picks everybody up, and Dean Oliver, one of the best guards, in the Big Ten, one of the best guards in this tournament, and Fitch doesn't let him go to the basket and makes him pass the ball. Sean Sondeleiter, freshman from Des Moines. First one rims out. Trying to stay loose, working his shoulders. How nervous could it be? Very nervous. Second one is good. 7.51 to go. 28-25 Iowa. TV. And a look at the game summary. Each team shooting the ball pretty well. I think the key here, Gus, is that the pace of this game, to me, favors Iowa. It's much more a half-court game than the up and down, I think, that would favor Kentucky. Seven minutes and 45 seconds remaining here in the first half of play. Iowa with a three-point lead. Thus far, Gus, this is a battle that they're fighting with tanks, and I think Kentucky would prefer to do it with helicopters. <laughs> From the air, an aerial assault. Saul Smith finds Prince, who's been bottled up so far, only three points. Boy, that's a great job by Oliver to force Prince to give up the ball. Inside, Marvin Stone, great rebound, he's fouled. And we've talked a great deal about Evans and the work that he can do on the board, but keep in mind, Kentucky has some big bodies in there as well, and you better be able to block out Marvin Stone. Nobody near him. He's 6'10", weighs 250 pounds. If he gets close to the basket, he can do some damage. A sophomore from Huntsville, Alabama. Marvin Stone at the line. Sound lighter with his second foul. And Stone missing. He's a 59% free throw shooter as Reggie Evans checks back in. Got to be able to make sure that Reggie Evans is rested and fresh because he's going to be attacked every time the ball goes anywhere near him, but you have to have him in the game so he can rebound the ball. In and out for Stone on the second. And here come the Hawkeyes. And Fitch is going to do everything he can just to stay in front of Oliver, prevent Oliver from penetrating to the basket. Now Kentucky back into the zone. Nine to shoot. Oliver looking to go one-on-one. -on -one. Bounce pass in the corner. Boyd's got to get it off. They do not. Shot clock violation called against the Hawkeyes there. Sixth turnover. And you know what, Gus? I think that Iowa may want to consider getting Brody Boyd more out on the top of the key because if he's in the corner, he's got either Tayshaun Prince or Keith Bogan running at him. He's going to be hard-pressed to get that shot off. Here's Bogan's no good pitch the tip. And he is a tremendous offensive rebounder. One of the problems that you have, Fitch is a good offensive rebounder, but when he's playing guard, lots of times guards don't block their men out, and Boyd did not that time. Averages four and a half rebounds per game. Anderson knocked away by Fitch. Kentucky takes the lead on the layup by Fitz. 
with 6.06 to go in the first half of play. Lee Smith's wife, a native of Richmond, Virginia, she has a special Kentucky blue fingernail paint job for this game tonight. It's supposed to bring them good luck. And I asked her in the hotel lobby today if she picks out Tubby's clothes before the game, his ties and his shirt. She says, no, that's his job. He does a pretty <laughs> fine job. There are the nails. Miss Smith. Well, now, if she was dressed all in purple or something, those nails would stand out, but <laughs> everything else is blue up there. They get lost in a sea of blue, and they wouldn't have it any other way. 29-28. Kentucky with its first lead. Boyd and Oliver in the backcourt for the Hawkeyes, along with Henderson, Evans, and Worley. And Kentucky doing a real good job in this zone defense, making it difficult for Iowa to find any openings. Oliver picking up the dribble. Now Evans going to work. Looks up top. Boyd, one dribble, a 16-foot lean-in is short. Oh. Evans around. Bogans with the board. Evans nearly tipped that in. Now Prince fouled by Oliver. Talking about the Kentucky defense and how difficult it is, look right here. Here's Brody Boyd. Now, look, there's four seconds left on the clock. As he gets the ball, Tayshaun Prince is going to come out. Remember, Prince is six feet nine. Boyd's not going to be able to shoot that when he's forced to put the ball on the deck, and the shot clock expires before they can get a basket. Boyd might be better advised to get closer to the top of the key where Prince can't run it. Tayshaun Prince. At the line, and Prince, a native of Compton, California, gets the second. 9-1 Kentucky run. And Kentucky's gotten a couple of transition baskets in this run. Iowa really struggling trying to find some openings against this zone defense. Worley and Henderson not really noted as outside shooters, and Iowa paying a lot of attention to Boyd and Oliver on the perimeter. Inside Evans, double team. Ten to shoot. Oliver, no room. Boyd. Worley gathers himself. Inside finds Henderson, blocked by Eskel. Inside Worley with the rebound and a whistle and foul. And Tubby Smith wanted to travel. Three possessions in a row. Tubby Smith's defense has really given Iowa some problems. It's gone under five seconds. They're the block shot. Now, this is good patience, not reacting and just trying to throw the ball up there. That foul just as the clock was going to zero. A tough break for Tubby Smith's defenders. Tubby Smith from Southern Maryland, hosted BMI, and Tulsa as a head coach, Georgia as a head coach, and here in Kentucky, it's on Rick Pitino's staff as an assistant with Ralph Willard and Billy Donovan and Herb Sendek. There's the tubby file. Gus, that gentleman that we just showed you right there got to 100 wins at Kentucky faster than any other coach in their history except a man named Adolph Ruff. And I think the building's named after him down there, right? <laughs> Last I checked. <laughs> He's doing a fine job, Tubby Smith. Now Prince stepping out. So does that mean they're going to have to eventually name one building Tubby, the Tubby Dome or something? Well, Tubby's got about 750 <laughs> more <laughs> wins to go. He certainly does. Glenn Worley called for the foul, and we can call him either the artist or the fresh prince of Kentucky. Tayshaun Prince. Well, no matter what you call him, this young man, when Kentucky needs a big hoop, he's the guy they go to. Scored 12 of the final 14 points for the Wildcats in that victory against Holy Cross on Thursday. And the Prince of Kentucky is trying to get his team to Philly. <laughs> 33-30. Our guys have pretty good music, too, as well. I didn't know we had all that in the Now Oliver, guarded by Blevins. Unable to take him off the dribble. Looks inside. Henderson. See, the problem is you kick the ball out to Worley, and he can't shoot the jump shot. Knocked out of bounds. Last touch by the... Wildcats, which you would like to see Oliver take a couple of jump shots, wouldn't you? 
Uh, they're really playing up on Oliver Gus. I think they're really making it difficult for him to find the jump shot. This is the other guy you got to find, and that time he does get it over Prince. Brody Boyd. Shows you how much I know. I'm saying he shouldn't be down in the corner because he can't shoot it over Prince, and he buries it. He was the third all-time leading scorer in Indiana schoolboy history. Averaged 32 points a game his senior year. Two threes tonight, six points. Game tied at 33. Iowa and Kentucky. Now Prince kicks it out, Saul Smith. Second three of the game for Saul Smith. Thirty six thirty three Kentucky leads Iowa here in the first half of play Kentucky seated number two Iowa number seven Boyd again in and out Smith gets a hand on it knocked around and Brody Boyd hits the deck and comes up with the orange boy great hustle by Iowa how is it that all those guys are in there including the leading rebounder in the country and 5'11 Brody Boyd comes out of there with it young man wanted it and Boyd steps on the baseline. 2.56 to go, first half to play. Kentucky by three. Playing zone defense, you have to know where the shooters are. Look right here, Blevins is pointing to the corner, and why is he pointing to the corner? Well, that's where Brody Boyd is. Tayshawn Prince doesn't find him. We showed you Prince forcing him to put the ball on the deck. That time, Prince far enough away. Boyd hits it. And the tournament summary, Georgetown and Maryland, they have to go all the way out west to finally meet in the Sweet 16. Those two teams, those two schools don't have a lot of love between each other. Absolutely not, Gus, but... Ashawn Prince in love with the downtown stroke. He now has 10 points, 39-33 Kentucky. And Kentucky has gotten the transition going a couple of times, and that's enabled them to pull out to what is now their biggest lead. Anderson inside, off the glass, an offensive foul. Basket will not count. The key has been the Kentucky defense. Iowa started out very effectively. Kentucky went to the zone, and Steve Alford's bunch just has not been able to find a lot of openings. Estel does a great job just holding his ground. Henderson trying to make something happen. Forced it and caused the charge. And Iowa 10 of 20 from the field, 50%. But Kentucky, 13 of 24, three more field goals. And a whistle and foul away from the ball. The illegal screen called against Blevins, trying to get Smith open. Let's take a look at the bracket here in the east. Uniondale, New York, on Long Island. SC defeats Boston College. Tremendous performances by David Bluthenthal, Brandon Granville, Sam Clancy, and Iowa and Kentucky. The winner will meet the Trojans in Philly. Glenn Worley at the line. Misses the front end of the one and one. Bogans travels on the rebound. And that was just a case of he and Blevins running into one another. You don't like the result, but you don't mind the hustle. Iowa turned it over five times in their last nine possessions. And here's that zone again, and Iowa has struggled against it. Boyd trying to hide himself over in the corner, and Daniels knows he's there. <laughs> How do you create some space for yourself with this Kentucky defense? You have got to get some penetration off the dribble or with the pass, but you've got to get inside the zone, force the zone to go inside out to create some opportunity. And the uh, Hawkeyes turn it over again. They're 10. Saul Smith in the corner. Bogan, rise and fire. Loose ball tapped around into the hands of Estel. He leans in. Got it and the foul. Boy, and Estel, a big contribution coming off the bench. We talked about play off the bench. Estel now with seven points in the game, showing great hands. Worley, who missed the rebound. And now, tough on defense. Boy, that's a good job keeping the ball away from Evans. There's just no place to throw it in there. And you've got to give a lot of credit to Estel. Forty-two to thirty-three, Kentucky on a 9-0 run. 
140 to go in the first half of play. Yes, Kentucky is a team that it's real difficult to beat them 55 to 50. If you're going to win the game against the Wildcats, you're going to have to score some points, and Iowa struggles on offense for making that very difficult. Here's Evans, can't draw contact. Eskel snatches it down. His fourth rebound. And Prince dribbles it, but gets a timeout before it falls out of bounds. It's a 30-second timeout. Three points for Iowa. Kentucky taking over. Up 42-33. This is the USC game. Boston College with the chance to tie it. They need a three. But Kenny Harley elects to go for two. And that was it. A tremendous season coming to an end for the Eagles and the season continuing for the USC Trojans. Very impressive performance by USC. A game with the exception of a couple of runs by Boston College, USC really was in control of. And USC really turned the ball over a lot in that game. And they survived with Granville, their point guard, fouling out with seven minutes to go. 27 turnovers for the Trojans. Now Oliver. And the Hawkeyes looking for some kind of scoring. Kyle Galloway has the ability to shoot the ball from the perimeter. Brody Boyd. Short. Out of bounds. Last touch by the Wildcats. Coming up on singular at the half, it's Greg Gumbel and Clark Kellogg. With scores and highlights, plus a live look in at the St. Joe's Stanford game. Bill Martelli trying to keep the season going for that St. Joe squad. One of the most colorful coaches in the country. Inside, Evans knocked away, batted around, out of bounds. And the Wildcats get it back. They are really collapsing on the ball when it goes in the paint. And Iowa really struggling on offense. I think Steve Alford just trying to get to halftime now, still in the game, down nine points. They're st they still got a shot at this. But they've got to be able to get some points. Well, here comes Saul Smith along with Daniel Zeskel, Bogans, and Tayshawn Prince. And now Iowa drops back into the zone. About a three-second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. Shot clock reads 16. And Prince certainly an effective three-point shooter, and you've got to watch Bogans and his ability to penetrate. Esto for three. He's feeling it today. Marquis Esto points at the Kentucky bench. He says, man, I'm ready to play. Ten points for Marquis. Great defense on Reggie Evans with 7.9 to go. That's what we mentioned. He's come off the bench and done an outstanding job. To this point, all his work inside, but that's a three. Now Evans inside. Can't get it to fall. Esto with the rebound. Spikes it. And that's the story in the first half of play. Marquis Esto heads into the locker room. 11 points, five rebounds on four or five shooting. And he's been tremendous on the defensive end as well. Here's Dwayne Ballin with Tubby Smith. Coach Smith, what a performance by Marquise Estel in the first half. Yeah, Marquise has been playing a lot better. His knees are, are strong right now. We were very inactive, I thought. We weren't very alert and very aggressive in our zone early part of the game, and, and Iowa was really taking it to us. The big kid was uh, having his way inside, but we were able to um, get them under control in our zone, and hopefully we can come back and play a little bit strong in the second half. Thank you. Congratulations. Good luck in the second half. All right, that's the end of the first half with the score. Kentucky 45, Iowa 33. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Nine from downtown. We start the second half. Kentucky with the ball. Bogans hard across the lane. Slices in. Tipped around. Here comes Oliver. Iowa with numbers. Oliver straight to the basket. He's fouled. And will shoot two. And Oliver gets up a little gimpy. Let's go, man. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oliver did not have very many opportunities in the first half to take the ball hard at the basket. And this is just a play where he sort of gets tangled up with Fitch. You notice Fitch spins his leg around. Then he lands. I just think he landed clumsily on his leg. I think it'll be all right. Reggie Evans, 10 points in the first five minutes. 
19.44 to go. Just underway here in the second half. And Iowa trails Kentucky. Dean Oliver, the senior leader on this team. One of two men in Big Ten, hit, one of three men, rather, in Big Ten history with 1,500 points, 500 steals, and 500 assists. Iowa back to the man-to-man -man defense, and there Parker picks up his third personal foul on an illegal screen. All right, let's take a look at the halftime numbers. Three-point shooting, Kentucky really doing a good job, Iowa, with those 11 turnovers. And you notice Kentucky, we talked about the transition offense that they wanted to have, 16 points off turnovers, and that's really what turned the first half around. And Parker picking up another foul. He had two in the first half, picks up his third, and has to sit the bench once again. Kentucky back into the zone. And it was a zone defense that really eliminated Reggie Evans from the offense. Inside here, Evans draws a double back to Evans. Underneath the basket, he is tied up. Iowa will hold on on the held ball. One. 19-13 to go here in the second half of play. Kentucky led by 12 at halftime. Iowa looking for something to get going for him offensively. Got the ball in. Evans with those 10 points early in the game. Nothing in the last 15 minutes of the half. And there's something they haven't had, Gus. That outside shot from Dean Oliver. Eight points for Oliver. His first perimeter basket of the game. Makes it a 45-38 contest. Gus, and I think Oliver's got to go find his shot, whether it be on the penetration. Even if it's a bad shot, that gives Evans a chance to go get it off the board. Very good point. Loose ball, knocked away. Duez Henderson finds Oliver on the move. Jump stop three. And the uh, senior is starting to heat up. Dan, I think he heard you from all the way over here. <laughs> well, that wasn't a bad shot, though. That was a good shot, Iowa. And they can get those turnovers, and transition offense works for them just as well as it does for Kentucky. Hawkeyes on an 8-0 run. Cutting it to four. Trailing by 12 at Abdon. When Prince got belted on the nose. Smith to the bucket. The kick, Prince. Dribble drive, the lean in, 14-footer with the left hand. I'm telling you, he and Bogans, they get you go out and guard him from three there. They've got a great ability to bounce into the lane, go straight up, and get the seven, eight-foot shot to go. Tell you what, when he rises with that left hand, it's almost as if he can just stretch it to the basket. So long. Now Evans, double team on the spin, steps on the baseline, out of bounds. Trying to force it inside, but Oliver on the wide open. And there's Evans cutting to the basket, so that's a good shot by Oliver. Not only is it wide open, but Evans is down under the basket, so even if he misses, Evans has a shot at the rebound. Six-point Kentucky lead. The winner to take on USC in the Sweet 16. There is Prince again, tipped by Daniels. New shot clock for the Wildcats. Knocked away, and a steal by Oliver. And this is what Oliver needs to do, is to attack. Pulls up from 15. Evans fighting for it, wanting it, knocking people over, and a whistle. Let's see the call. It's against Saul Smith. Gus, and that's precisely what I'm talking about. If you shoot the ball, particularly in a situation where there's a scramble going on, Evans is going to have a chance at the rebound. Now, Oliver gets the steal, and then he heads down the other end the missed shot, Saul Smith, I, he fouled Evans' shoulder with his chest. Inside, Evans, great catch, scooped it up. And draws the foul. And that's what Steve Alford was talking about at halftime, getting the ball into Evans, and even if he's not going to score, he's going to draw the foul. Boy, how do you lose Evans on the inside like that? Stone just late reacting. Daniels cannot let Evans get in front. But after Oliver hit those two deep jump shots, all of a sudden, there's a little bit more room in that paint to get the ball to Evans. As he misses the first free throw. So here comes J.P. Blevins. Bogans will take a seat. 
Evans was outstanding from the free throw line on Thursday, making 13 of 15, most of those late in the game. Second one good. 47 to 42. So this makes it interesting again. You've chopped seven points off that 12 point halftime lead. Tucky has had some trouble here in the second half of play. Out the Levens. Worley really working hard against Tayshawn Prince, and he has done a nice job. Prince has 12 points, 10 at halftime. The crossover steps back from deep. Rims out Evans fighting his way and grabs the rebound is eight. That is a big time block out. Now Henderson slicing. J.P. Blevins the other way. Dejon Fritz spinning. Pretty. In transition, he's almost impossible to stop, and that's the danger for Iowa. If you're due as Henderson and you shoot that ball, you almost have to make it, because if you miss, that allows Kentucky to run down to the other end. Now Evans with three guys around. Inside, Evans taken away into the hands of Worley. He stripped, gets it again, power dribble, goes up, under the backboard, no call. Boy, Kentucky doing a great job with their interior defense. Saul Smith leaves his feet to Daniels. Tipped up and in, Stone with a hand on it. And the lead up to nine. Fifteen twenty-one to go, second half will play. Evans picks up the foul. Kentucky up 51 42. Has been doing. Prince has 12 points, but he's had to work very hard. And the more Worley can force opportunities like that, the better for the Iowa defense. Man to man for Iowa. Had to follow up top. Just we're talking about Worley working really hard, trying to keep Prince from first catching the ball and then getting to the basket. Prince catches the ball. Worley now going after him, fighting his way through that screen, gets called with that left hand. But you're going to pick up some fouls, Garden Prince. That comes with the territory. That's good effort. Iowa back in the zone. Daniels dumps it down, batted by Evans. And Worley picks it up. I, with that little run, had it cut to five, and now they're down nine. They need to get a hoop. Evans forces it up. Fan draws the foul. And when he can get his shoulder square, he's got a pretty quick first step. Gus, it's amazing. A guy that size who's noted as a rebounder. This is a couple of times now. A great square up move. And then he just puts it down and goes to the basket. That is a tremendous move. Made all the more effective by the fact that who is going to want to step in in front of this guy and take a charge? <laughs> it's like stepping in front of a bull at full speed as Evans gets the first. So that makes the question. Steve Alford has been stuck him on the low block a lot. Do you bring him out further, Dan? I think that you try to get him to move around in there wherever he can find an opening. That's what you're left with right now. And the more active he is, the better. But I don't think over the long term you bring him out to the top of the key because, again, you want him around the basket. So if the guys shoot the ball out on the perimeter, he's got a chance. Now, I'll tell you what. Evans and Estel have really been going at it. Evans got Estel in the throat with an elbow early in the game, and Estel just returned the favor right there. 13 points for Reggie Evans. 51 to 44, Kentucky. Hogan's back in with the screen. Moves towards the sideline. Nice play. High level. Prince to Estel. Boy, and Estel is having himself one heck of a game. Tubby Smith asking the referees for a foul in addition, but that was really a pretty play. 13 points for Estel. Court, Oliver Thompson in the game for Iowa. He hit a couple of threes in the first half. Evans short. Had to reach and foul on Reggie Evans. 
Marquis Estel. He's been going to work. Well, Estel is known as one of the meanest guys on the Kentucky team, and after Evans hit him with that elbow early in the half, he really did go to work. And he's also one of the better shooters on the Kentucky team. They say that when he's healthy and his knees are feeling good, that he can shoot the ball as well as anybody on the squad. Tommy Smith told our Wayne Ballin that uh, his knees are feeling pretty good today. Inside, Estel on the power move, fades. The bank won't go. That's a good move to attack Evans. He picked up a couple of quick fouls. Boy, Kentucky doing a nice job getting out on the board. Really short. I think Iowa needs a little bit more from Worley offensively, Gus. You gotta make that shot. And Evans makes that one. Rather, Blevins makes that one. J.B. Blevins, his first basket of the game. A three-pointer. Kentucky up by 11. Inside, Thompson, and one. One of the reasons that Kentucky's had some success is they've been able to identify the shooters and get out on them. Here's Boyd right here. And watch the Kentucky defense react to him. Passes the ball to the corner. Now, as soon as he catches the ball, Saul Smith's out on him, makes him get rid of it. Worley takes the ball inside but misses. The key there is to put the ball in the hands of Worley, who's not nearly as solid a shooter as Boyd. Rod Thompson adds the free throw. 56 to 47. Kentucky. Now, Iowa now looking for another one of those mini runs to get this game back a little bit more under control. Hogan on the hop. Nice look. Asco, great catch and finish. Nothing breaks down a defense like that dribble penetration. You draw the defenders, and if you've got guys who go to open spots, you can kill it. And that's exactly what estel has been doing all night. This Kentucky defense just makes Iowa stop. Oliver, downtown, rattles it home. Oliver with three threes in the second half of play with 14 points now. He cuts it to eight. Now Iowa needs a stop on defense. Here's the Prince of Kentucky in the low post. Saul Smith from straight away. Esther going up high, coming up with the board. His sixth rebound. And they call that foul against Worley. Estel really doing a heck of a job inside. Great position. Meanwhile, Kentucky finding the open man. Up by eight. Gumbel and Clark Kellogg in New York. We'll get you back to Iowa, Kentucky in a moment. But first, let's check in on what's happening in was DePaul. St. Joe's was also a number nine seed that year. Let's go back. 11.24 to go here in the second half. And part of the problem for Iowa is they've got to figure out how to shut off the inside game of Kentucky. Of course, it gets harder when that guy's going to stand out there and drill the threes. And Kentucky goes up by 11. 17 points for Tayshaun Prince. When every time Iowa starts to draw a little bit closer, Kentucky has an answer. It's been Estel inside and Prince outside. And they do it with the greatest of ease. Boyd, quick release, and it ball right out of, out of bounds, and that one came off his hand funny. You could see it when he let it go. Sometimes you'd lose guys out on the perimeter. They're the zone defense. The penetration by Bro Bogans draws the defender. And Henry Bibby doing some early scouting. <laughs> He has a perplexed look on his face. How do you stop this Kentucky team? Well, I don't know that that was perplexed. That's the way Henry always looks. <laughs> he is a guy that there's always something going on behind those eyes. A thinker. Absolutely. Tapped out of bounds. Oliver swiping at it. And what a great, great game plan the Trojans of USC devised today to deal with Boston College. That was really a tremendous effort. They lose their point guard with seven minutes to go. Young guy that's only taken a couple of free throws all year, bangs some down from the free throw line to help him win the game. And there, Prince again, talking about banging him down, Gus. As he looks at us, and cracks a smile. <laughs> Tayshaun Prince with 20 points at 27 against Holy Cross. 
And his range is unlimited. The zone not effective on Prince because he can continue to step back. Henderson draws the foul. Kentucky by 14. Test your knowledge of tournament trivia and participate in live polls through this interactive telecast available on Ultimate TV. I mean, if you watch where Prince is lined up when he takes his three-point shots, first of all, he's six feet nine inches. That's a lot of men with long arms so he can get it to the basket. Gus, the amazing thing about him is that you go out and you attack him and he's so good at going by, stopping and shooting the mid-range jump shot or taking it all the way to the basket and getting that little hook shot. The late Jim Valvano used to talk about how he wanted guys who were hard to guard and Tayshaun Prince certainly meets that definition. Anderson makes the second. 64 to 52, a lot of time remaining, 10 minutes to go. Ira still with an opportunity to put something together. Bogans rising, in and out. And the rebound goes to Jason Smith. Now Oliver in transition. A reversal to Henderson. And now with Boyd out of the game and Smith in, very little on the perimeter except for Oliver in terms of shooting ability for Iowa. Inside, Thompson leads in, no, Hestel had a hand on it, out of bounds, and Bogans can't keep hold of it. Gus, you're talking about Tayshaun Prince and his range. Look over here, Tayshaun Prince is out beyond the three-point line, and he just steps further back, and you figure he's not going to shoot the ball from out there, but you better believe because he's going to get it done. Four of six on the three-point line tonight. Oliver for three. Oh! Dean Oliver. 17 points, four threes in the second half of play. Gus, and he's doing everything he can to keep them in this game. He's got to keep shooting it. Now Saul Smith, hard dribble down the lane, hands it off to Bogans. Prince, great ball fake. Saul Smith passed up on the three. Now Bogans inside. What a great pass by Tayshaun Prince. You'd normally figure that as hot as he's been that he'd take that three-point shot, but he passed it up and then did a great job reversing the ball back to Bogans. Great perimeter passing by the Wildcats. As they say, the ball can move faster than a man. Henderson fouled up top. Dean Oliver. Gus, we talked about the fact how Iowa really needed some offense from the perimeter to help open up that inside, and Dean Oliver's doing everything he can to provide it. Really lighten it up, four three-point baskets in the second half. Duez Henderson at the line. Iowa down by 11, and a sub getting ready to check in the game for Steve Alford as Henderson misses the front end. Now, Henderson is a young man that had 16 points in their win on Thursday. And this is an Iowa team that's really much better, particularly on offense, when they can get some scoring from Worley and Henderson inside, when they don't have to rely totally on Evans to produce those points. And Henderson gets the second. Substitute coming into the game is Gerald Fitch replacing Saul Smith. Gus, the problem for Iowa in the second half really has not been their offense. They've been scoring pretty consistently. The problem for Iowa in this half is they have not been able to stop the Kentucky offense. The Hawkeyes really need to dig in here and get a couple of stops in succession. It's just been much too easy for Kentucky on the offensive end. Iowa back in that zone defense. Bogans, short, tapped up. Oliver comes down with it. Now Oliver on the move into the front court. At it, bat it, goes to the bucket. Layup is good. Dean Oliver, 19 points. Oh boy, the Iowa Hawkeyes were all running down the court and they didn't notice that ball hit the back of Gerald Fitch's ankle. Oliver with 16 of his 19 in the second half of play. It's 
Zone defense once again. France around the corner. Levins shuffles it to Fitch with four to shoot. Fitch pulls up. Ah, oh, you got to be kidding me. That is a killer. You cannot be serious with that shot. Great defense for over 30 seconds, and he hits a bomb. 69-58, Kentucky. Guess it was great defense throughout. That shot was impossible. He had a guy right in his face, and he was right in Tubby Smith's lap. Inside, Evans gets it. And an elbow called on Reggie Evans. Getting a little frustrated now, his third. He's got two and three guys around him every time he catches the ball. Now, look at this. Look how far away Fitch is. He is literally right on top of his own bench with a guy in his face. Welcome back to the Nassau Coliseum. A look at the game summary at Kentucky. Shooting 54% from the field, 50% from the three-point line. They have it uh, really working right now. Gus, they're really playing well offensively. They, they've got a nice inside-outside combination going. Estill has come off the bench and provided really a lot of support in there. They've defended against Evans very, very well. So here come the Cats. Inside Stone. Knocked away. Great steal by Boyd. He's got Oliver on his hip for the basket and foul. And this is what you're looking for if you're Iowa. You've got to create some turnovers. Just a bad pass. Haven't seen Kentucky make too many passes like that today. And Bogans and Prince both back. But Oliver, being aggressive, going to the basket, draws the foul. Oliver, three of three from the line. 19 points for Dean, and first free throw is good for an even 20 as Duez Henderson comes back into the game. And Saul Smith returning. J.P. Blevins takes a seat. Gus, Iowa really needs to turn up the defensive intensity here to force Kentucky into some tough shots, preferably some quick shots, and then they need to get down and convert on the offensive end. Oliver to cut it to nine, can't get it to stay down. Keep in mind that Evans had ten points in the first five minutes of this game, and since that time, he's only scored three. Iowa the man-to-man. -man. Trying to change defenses to disrupt this Kentucky offense, but very little has disrupted the Kentucky offense tonight. Prince posted up. He's got it. Turns with the left hand, rattles it down. Unless you get somebody to come to him and make him give up the ball, that stop, is, that shot is almost an unstoppable one. It's like a three-quarter hook. 71-59, 22 points for Prince. Kentucky has really done a nice job in this zone defense. It's been very active for the most part. They've cut off the perimeter shots, and they've just closed Evans down completely. Oliver gets by Bogans, hangs in the air, loose ball, Worley, rebound, whirls around and out. Here comes Bogans, high dribble and a region foul coming up the floor. We talked about Tayshawn Prince. Watch as this ball goes inside to him. Nobody comes down to help. He's allowed to take one dribble, gets himself backed in. You know, that's not an easy shot. That's about an five foot to eight foot little jump hook shot there that's unbelievable that he makes that with such consistency approaching the five minute mark of the second half prince he always looks like he's playing under control Gus. he's not really forcing anything out there he's kind of got a regal feel to his game as he hits it again <laughs> the artist Formerly known as Prince with 25 points. 74-59 timeout, Iowa. Tayshawn here in the East. He has been a king for this Kentucky squad. Definitely for Iowa. 
It's going to be hard for them to beat Kentucky with twos unless they can create some turnovers. You can't trade baskets, obviously, with the Wildcats at this point. And Kentucky can afford to be patient. You don't want to lose your aggressiveness, but you'd like to run some time off the clock, run your offense. High pick and roll, Saul Smith pulls up. In and out, Hogan's great rebound, triple pump, short, snatched down with two hands by Henderson. The outlet to Oliver, pulls up for three again. And an over the back foul called on Worley. His fifth foul. He will have to take a seat. Iowa foul is on Glenn Worley. That's his fifth personal foul. That's five on Worley. Number 25. Worley obviously very upset, but he had a tough, tough hand to play today, trying to guard Tayshawn Prince. Freshman will see better days at Iowa, but I doubt he'll ever see a tougher assignment than Tayshawn Prince. So the artist with a masterpiece today Tayshawn Brent's 25 points two boards he's hit a bunch of threes six of eight from the field in the second half alone and he is five of seven from downtown this is the second 75 61 Kentucky 3.36 to go here in the second half of play. And a foul. Estel trying to force Evans off that low block. Estel picks up his second. And I think Tubby Smith has done a great job utilizing his centers today. Jason Parker, Stone, and Estel to really stay all over Evans. Keeping a fresh guy on Evans all the time. We talked to Tubby yesterday, and he compared Garden Evans to what it was like when he coached against Big Country Reeves. And it's amazing. Tubby Smith criticized in the Kentucky newspapers by the fans. Uh, some felt that he was under pressure at the beginning of the year, especially after the 3-5 and five start. you got to be crazy if you don't want Tubby Smith to be your head coach. He's one of the best by far in the country. Let's go to Greg Gumbel for the end of the Stanford game. All right, all they need to do is in Tucky, leading Iowa 80 to 67. Gus Johnson and Dan Bonner, you're on again, guys. Kentucky 27 bench points, Iowa 12. For complete tournament coverage, go to cbs.sportsline.com. 20 of those bench points, of course, coming from Marquise Estel. And Keith Bogans, quiet but very steady. 11 points, he averages 16. Didn't need him as much tonight on the offensive end, but he does have six rebounds, three assists. And part of the problem for Iowa, you want to pressure. But when Saul Smith and Fitch can get it past the front line of your pressure, they're passing it to finishers like Bogans and Prince. And talk about finishers. Wow, six threes now for Oliver. Lead cut to 12 with 2.18 to go. Bogans down to Estel, hammers it down. Marquise Estel having a career night in the NCAA tournament. And the foul on the baseline. Let's check in with our Dwayne Ballin. Gus, we're here with Henry Bibby, Southern California coach. Coach, it's apparent your team will face Kentucky in the round of 16. What do you think of this team? Well, you know, they're a good, very good basketball team. We look forward to playing against them. Uh, we're going to try to play our game. We, we're going to get the ball inside. We're going to run some plays, and, and hopefully it's going to be what we want it to be. Getting this program to the round of 16 for the first time in a long time, 54 since they've been this far, means a lot for your program. Well, you know, the kids have done an excellent job. I give them all the credit, and we just got to keep going forward right now. Thank you, Coach Bibby. Thank you. Gus? All right, Dwayne, Henry Bibby on that 71 national championship team with UCLA. He won three at UCLA. Sidney Wicks, remember him? Sidney Wicks, Curtis Rowe. Wow. Against the A-Train. They defeated Jacksonville in the national championship game. Artis Gilmore and Coach Bibby with a lot more hair back then. <laughs> it was the 70s. He had the big afro. 
Steve Alford. He still has all his hair and a bright future. Coaching, you do this business long enough, you're going to lose that hair. It's going to turn gray. Particularly when you got to coach against guys like Tayshawn Prince. Oh, my goodness. You can do all the defensive planning that you want, and there are just some guys who you cannot defend. Talked about Coach Bibby back in the 70s. There he is when he was playing for the Philadelphia 76ers. Also won an NBA championship with the New York Knicks. 86-72. Anderson dumps it down for Evans, who steps out, and it's the baby jump shot. And Evans just has not had very many opportunities tonight. Kentucky really did a great job shutting him off. And it's a final out west. Stanford survives and advances, knocking off St. Joe's 90-83. The Cardinal move on, and they will take on Cincinnati as we take a look at the West Regional Bracket. They'll move on to Anaheim, the Pond in Anaheim, Stanford, Cincinnati. Bob Huggins will have something ready for the Cardinal. And Maryland, Georgetown, talking about a crosstown rivalry. They played a few years back at the old Capitol Center with Maryland winning in the last few moments of the game. John Thompson was the coach at Georgetown back then. That was during the Joe Smith era. Exactly. At Maryland. One forty to go here in the second half. Kentucky running and gunning now. Up big on top of Iowa, 87 to 74. The story tonight, the play of the artist. Tayshawn Prince and Marquise Estel. Huge games as you take a look at the East. And Kentucky will face USC in Philadelphia in the next round, the Sweet 16. But when you look at the numbers, Prince and Estel have put up 26 points for Tayshawn Prince, 22 points for Marquis Sestel to go along with six rebounds on nine of 11 shooting. Justin, the Kentucky defense has been outstanding as well. In a zone most of the game, they've really shut off Reggie Evans inside. And Iowa just having a hard time finding points. So the young man from Compton, California, has put on a show in the first two rounds. 27 against Holy Cross and 26 tonight. One minute remaining. And Prince, exclamation. Oh, you cannot be serious. <laughs> Deshaun Prince, 29. And he has been hit from everywhere. Fitch with the rebound, 47 seconds to go. And this is, this is Kentucky's play to run the clock down. Just give it to this guy, he'll dribble it around, and at the end of the clock, he'll score. He's fouled. And we'll go to the line looking for number 30. So the bracket in the East, Duke advancing, UCLA winning today, big. So Duke and UCLA in Philadelphia, USC, Kentucky. Look at Tayshawn. Effortless. Six feet, nine inches tall. With unlimited range. Now certainly that shot he just took right there would be evidence of the fact that if his range does have a limit, we haven't seen it. <laughs> that would probably be where they park the buses. <laughs> so Reggie Evans, what a tremendous season for the junior college transfer. Comes out of the game. And Dean Oliver comes out of the game. And what a tremendous career for Dean Oliver at Iowa. An underrated guard, a young man who's never really had more than one year where he's played with the same backcourt mate just an outstanding career for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Not only an outstanding player, but an outstanding young man. Has battled back from a number of personal uh, tragedies. His father, as you take a look at Reggie Evans, but Dean Oliver's father incarcerated for drug trafficking for two years. He's out, very supportive of his son and admitting that he has made some mistakes. Oliver raised his younger brother in Iowa City 
a 4.0 student. Career high for Tayshawn Prince. Here's Smith, gets it to fall. 92-77, Tubby Smith clearing his bench. And Kentucky doing a good job running it down. Giving it up, here's Smith the other way. And the bucket is good for Courtney Scott. Nine seconds to go. Kentucky gets it over the line. And they will head towards the city of brotherly love. And the Sweet 16. Tayshawn Prince a career high. Reggie Evans has another year to play. And he'll have Luke Recker with them next season. But Tubby Smith, another great win for the Kentucky program. And this year he gets out and into the Sweet 16. The final score, 92 to 79. The bracket once again in the East, Duke, UCLA, USC, Kentucky coming up on Thursday. Dean Oliver is the MVP for Iowa. Marquis Eskel, a career high 22 points for Kentucky. Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund. For Dan Bonner and our entire Kentucky side.